a heart experience. To have salvation, we must go through a born-again experience that renews our hearts. Here's Gene. The Apostle Paul actually, in his letter, has been setting the stage for this reality that is expressed in this, this particular principle. And he, he wants all of us, that is, Paul wanted all of his readers, and which includes us, to realize that a true relationship with God involves the heart, not just the head, not just uh, a formal uh, head experience, head knowledge. And so, to make this point, Paul continues to use his own people, uh, his fellow Jews. And this is what he wrote uh, relative to what we call conversion of the heart in Romans chapter 2. For a person is not a Jew who is one outwardly, and true circumcision is not something visible in the flesh. On the contrary, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart by the Spirit, not the letter. And what Paul is saying is that a true experience of knowing Christ and entering into this life that He gives us, uh, the life eternal that God wants us all to have, he's simply saying that uh, it has to be a hard experience. And the Jews had a real problem with this, particularly in terms of circumcision. After the first missionary journey, for example, after Paul and Barnabas got back from going into the Galatian region and coming back to Antioch in Syria, there was a group of Judaizers who came down from Jerusalem and they were teaching that unless you're circumcised, you can't be saved. And the Apostle Paul went into a serious discussion, even a serious argument over this issue, and eventually uh, they went to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles and elders together to resolve this issue, and the bottom line was we're saved by grace through faith, nothing else. And that was a very important decision made by the church and the leaders in Jerusalem and by the apostles. And they wrote a letter that uh, Paul and others could take and share this with the Gentile churches that were really confused about this issue. So this is on Paul's heart, and what he's doing is he's using this as an illustration to show that a true experience with Christ is internal. It's not external. And as I was thinking about that, I thought about the fact that Jesus dealt with this with a very religious Jew, and I think a very sincere religious Jew, probably a member of the Sanhedrin. His name was uh, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he was fearful. And he had been watching and listening. And he said to Jesus, he said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God because no one could be doing these miracles that you're doing except he is from God. And Jesus, uh, to this man's great surprise, made a statement that relates to what Paul is teaching about this hard experience. And here's what Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus replied to Nicodemus, who came with this statement, we know that you are from God. Jesus just turns it right back and he says, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was puzzled. How can anyone be born when he's old? Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? I mean, this is a serious question. He's confused. And Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, Unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now, there's a lot of discussion as to what Jesus meant with water, and my personal opinion is if you look at the context, he's talking about natural birth versus spiritual birth. Because he goes right on to say, what is born of flesh is flesh, natural birth, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. And so Jesus here is 
teaching, Nicodemus, that faith, true faith, relates to the internal. He's dealing with the fact that it doesn't relate to circumcision. It doesn't relate to outward formalities. It relates to an inner experience, a change of the heart. It's interesting. Today, there are a lot of people who claim to be Christians, but it's oftentimes based on what they believe are acts of righteousness. For example, water baptism. They say, if you're not baptized in water, you can't be saved. Well, the fact is that the Bible says that we are to go make disciples, baptizing them. That is, the disciples, the followers of Jesus. But if we're relying on baptism, whether it's sprinkling or whether it's immersion as being a part of our salvation, we're mixing works and grace and faith. And there are a lot of people that are relying on that for their salvation. And that would be in the same category as circumcision, as it were, in the Old Testament. Religious affiliation. They believe because they're a member of a particular group that that's the basis of their salvation. But that's external. It's not wrong to be religiously affiliated, <laughs> but that's not the basis of our salvation or any form of good works. And this is the point that the Apostle Paul is making here in relationship to our salvation. So here's what I call an awesome reality. Like the religious Jews, Paul was addressing, it's possible for both Jews and Gentiles today to believe the truth that is revealed in God's Word without that truth changing their hearts. True conversion is a hard experience, based on knowledge, obviously, but it's an internal uh, transformation. So here's the reflection and response question. Why does this kind of external religion often give people a sense of false security and even keep others from having a born-again experience? Well, that really relates to some of the previous questions that we've related in terms of confusion about how we're saved. But I think these externals simply feed our natural tendency to do something to atone for our sins. And when we do this external thing, we feel, oh, this is an act of righteousness that will give us life that is eternal in Jesus Christ. Um, it makes us feel good about ourselves. And also, it can be a sense of pride that we're better than other people. And because we are, we're going to inherit eternal life. So it's very natural, I think, for us to move in this direction. And so one of the things that we need to make abundantly clear in the presentation of the gospel of Jesus is that true conversion is a born-again experience that affects the heart. So here's the principle to live by. To have salvation, we must go through a born-again experience that renews our hearts.